Hello, my name is Lorraine Alpillard and I am a psychic medium and a spiritual teacher. In my upcoming video, I had the opportunity to speak to a gentleman by the name of Fred Walker, who I reached out to when I learned that he had a near-death experience. As a born medium, I've always been interested in learning more about the nature of our soul. In this interview, Fred describes what it was like to pass away from the physical realm and come back to talk about it. I really enjoyed speaking with Fred. He has a lovely energy and his experience, what he describes, I feel is life changing. I hope that you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed speaking with Fred and that you find the same life changing experience in listening to his story. So Fred, I just wanted to say thank you very much for uh, for agreeing to, to meet with me and allowing me to, to interview. So formally, my name is Lorraine, and I had been trying to get a hold of you for a while. We were scheduled for last week, and then as Pate had it, um, there was that mishap. So I appreciate very much you allowing me to, to connect with you and talk about your story. So uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna take it from the top and, and introduce you, and then we'll have a little bit of a discussion. And I know that you um, have a good story to tell, so I'm looking forward to hearing it. And I'm looking forward to sharing it, so thank you. So here we go. Okay, do you have any questions for me at all, Fred, or how, how you feel, you comfortable? No, I'm comfortable, that's fine. I've spoken in different situations before, so. Okay, let, yeah, let I felt that you did. All righty, awesome, thank you very much. I'd like to introduce at this time, well, I'm gonna do that over again just for editing, okay. I'd like to introduce at this time, uh, Mr. Fred Walker, and Fred lives in Ontario, Canada. And he has really a very interesting story to tell. Now, Fred is a very accomplished man as it is with an interesting history to tell as it is. He's a retired RCMP officer and he has been involved in martial arts and he has been really on a lifelong quest for, um, for understanding the nature of life, which is what had drawn me to him initially to want to talk to him and Fred has a very interesting experience whereas um, he actually has had a near-death experience and for about 18 minutes on one day um, in April of 2005 Fred passed away and I'm here to ask Fred to talk about that experience. I know that um, it's, it was very profound and it was very life altering. And it's my hope to be able to get some more information from him and to be able to share with others really this phenomenal that we call life and to be able to share the understanding that we are more than just what we appear here in the physical and that we are, in fact, immortal, we're everlasting. And let me, uh, let me uh, ask you, Fred, at this time, uh, tell me about the events that led up to this experience. What, what did that day start out for you to be like on the day that you died? Well, on the day that I died, it was, uh, I was actually at an, weekend event in Kelowna, British Columbia, and uh, it was pretty much over, and they were going to have a dance, and I like to dance, I like especially rock and roll kind of thing, and uh, so the dance was going on, and I basically danced myself to death. Um, I had a full cardiac arrest while I was dancing, and uh, the reason that that kind of came about, I felt it coming, but four years prior to that I had heart um, pains and whatnot went to see the doctor and the doctor said your heart's stronger than mine Fred and I said why have I got these pains and he said it must be acid reflux so I was thinking well this is acid reflux I'll just dance my way through it it's, it's just chest pains no big deal I literally as I said killed myself 
And uh, fortunately, there was two doctors in the uh, audience at the dance. And uh, one apparently saw it happening. And he, he said to me the next day, he said, Fred, you were dead before you hit the floor kind of thing. And uh, see, you had a full cardiac arrest. And he started breathing for me. Another doctor that was there, he was over 60. He jumped on apparently on top of me, cracked a few ribs trying to keep my heart functioning. And uh, for 18 minutes, I was gone. And they ended up having to bring in defib emergency equipment and hit me twice to, to bring me back. And uh, so of course, I didn't, I was out of it by that time, didn't come around until I was at the emergency. And uh, the one doctor, uh, he, he played bagpipes and whatnot, had very strong lungs, I guess. And uh, so when I came around in the emergency, um, they had a, uh, during the day, there, there was a speech and he was doing a presentation and, and telling people how dangerous uh, French fries were. And uh, so he said to me when I came around, <clears throat> because I, asked, I I threw up some French fries, and uh, <laughs> he said, you didn't put your hand up when I asked the people in the audience. And I looked at him and said, you said McDonald's French fries, and these weren't McDonald's. So he really, really um, found that humorous, and I guess relieved himself at some point because he realized there was no brain damage. So anyway, um, that whole situation, the very next day when I came around in emergency, people were calling me Miracle Man and so on, the, the, the nurses and, the, and the, the doctors sticking their head in there. And I didn't understand why, because I was on the, just coming out of the situation. And uh, so they basically explained to me what had, what had happened that I was gone that long, uh, but I couldn't stop crying. I, I was constantly crying and uh, my wife was not there. She, she flew in of course, and so did a couple of my kids. And the nurse said to my wife, that's all normal. People are depressed a little bit when they go through something like this. But I wasn't. I was so full of joy and love and compassion. I couldn't stop the tears from coming. And uh, it, it, that went on for three or four days. And it just, that whole um, event changed who I was. My personality completely changed. So you woke up from that event, you woke up from being clinically deceased with a sense of humor, talking about fries, and then you had this really sensation of being, of being very moved, of being moved to tears, and, and you feel that it was a sense of joy that you were experiencing, a sense of joy? It was uh, overwhelming love and compassion. I, oh, okay. I, I, totally totally changed my personality um people know me i i had a martial arts center uh, for 30 years and it still had was in had at the time my students were so intimidated by my energy that they would not ask me questions they would come to my wife or to somebody else uh, to ask questions and uh, after this situation, my personality had changed so much that I was hugging people and, and they, they didn't understand. They just, I was a totally different person. My wife even nowadays refers to me as the new you kind oh, of thing. Wow. So the pers my personality was, uh, changed dramatically, actually. And, uh, and it's been like that ever since. So tell me, Fred, do you have any recollection of or any images of during those moments of when you were actually deceased? Uh, well, what I actually felt like when I was dancing and it started to happen to me, um, I felt like my hands, my arms were thrown up in the air above my head at about 45 degrees. And it was like as if I was about to do a backward dive off of a, into a, a swimming pool or something. And I felt myself go up in the air, uh, totally opposite from what the doctor said. I was dropped like a, a sack of potatoes to the ground. 
And when I when I rose to the, that situation, I did not have the the uh, experience that several people do. They say they float around and they they've seen uh, themselves down in, in an operating room or whatever. Um, I didn't have that. I had an inner feeling inside of me that the love and compassion that just overwhelmed again. I can I can still remember myself saying, "No, I must go back. I need to go back to my my family. They need me." And uh, uh, that went around several times until I ended up back. But I didn't see uh, uh, um, the the tunnel. I didn't see a lot of uh, what other people who have had near death experiences did. Like they, many people say, they they saw their family, different people come to meet them, and so on and so forth. I I didn't have that, and I I asked kind of over the year after I started to think about and and try to sort things out. Uh, I wondered why that didn't happen. And then it kind of came clear to me that my message was when I came back was to tell other people about uh, the purpose of who we are, why we're here, and not about me. It's, it couldn't be about me. I was the kind of individual that would have a tendency to be the center of attention and, and, and talk about myself. Mm -hmm. But the message was about love and compassion and how important that, that was. And so I got came to the conclusion that because of that being my strong personality, a lot of what I did feel um, or experience was kind of neutralized. And uh, I could make up stories and how because of what I've heard other people say and so on. But I don't have really anything sensational to say other than the fact that I came back knowing the purpose of our living, our, who we are, the fact that we don't die, and the fact that love and compassion is, is central to who we are, our, our energy. And my message was from that point on to try to tell other people that, that that's what life is about and our purpose. And, and so, and I love that story, Fred, about how you feel very guided to share what you feel is the purpose of life. So when you're talking about how just prior to your passing, to your physical passing, that you had that sensation of your soul being coming out and detaching from your physical body, having that awareness that you are indeed more than your physical self. Is that, is that right? Like just having this sort of out of body experience and being propelled out of your physical body? Yes, ab absolutely. Um, I, I can probably say that most of what you hear about new death experience and so on, I, I, I can 100% agree with most of what I hear other people say in relation to your soul and, and the soul being... Um, again, love, and that really keeps coming back to a very simple message, who we are and the energy that we are universally in, in our connection and, and so on, life in general, if you will, is all love, it is love-centered, it's about love, and um, compassion is just love in action as far as the way I look at it anyway, and uh, so everything that we, we we need to center ourselves on in our thought process and motivation and so on has to be centered around love as long as it is uh, we're on the right path we're continuing to grow as individuals and help other people in the process i i agree with that i i feel that that's uh, absolutely true and and from looking at your your life you were, you've lived a life of service you were an RCMP officer. That's what, you know, an individual that provides service. You were a sensei of karate. That's, again, a, a, a living a life or living, a, doing a service, which is, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of balance with, with martial arts, so spirit and body. 
And then you have this, this phenomenon of, of passing away and, and then coming back to, to talk about it and feeling again that it happened for a purpose and, and it's to, and again, being of service, you feel guided to be of service. Did you ever, did you ever stop and ask yourself, why me? Why did I get to come back? Did you ever have those thoughts? Yeah, asking myself about why me, it's, it's something I, I think I started doing almost while I was still in the hospital. Uh, because like I said, many of the, the professionals in the hospital, they start referring to me as the miracle man. And, 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 and because someone being gone for that long, 18 minutes, um, they expected at the very least, if you did come back, there would be uh, mental problems and so on that, that uh, we would normally have. And it was like it didn't even happen to me. I, it was uh, so, yeah, it did change. It changed. And, and, and since then, uh, the reason that happened to me, they, they uh, while I was in, still in the hospital, they did an angiogram to check what caused it. And uh, they found that the right side of my heart, the main artery going in the right side of my heart was 90% blocked. And the, wow. the, the, thing, the thing that they were amazed about was that my left side had grown three arteries over to the <laughs> right side to supply that side of my heart. And that, and that's when they were turning around saying that this we just we don't see it uh, not certainly not very very often. I was sixty years old at the time, and uh, so and since then I've had at that time I had bypass surgery. Fourteen years later, uh, or not fourteen nine years later, I had another bypass surgery. A year after that, they opened the top of my head <clears throat> and removed the tumor. So um, yeah, I'm still here, and I, and because there's, I'm convinced there's a message that that uh, needs to be continued to be shared. So I've always been looking for ways. I founded a center for the deaf as well, and I was a Christian minister uh, for five or six years. Uh, again, trying to uh, that was before all this happened, and uh, so now trying to find ways after this happened i wrote a small book uh, that i felt was actually fed to me from above um it, it was all about love and compassion how it should be worked and how it can fit into our daily lives and so on um, i set up a workshop about truth within is what it was called and again trying trying to find different venues to to uh, spread this word about love and compassion and I even started singing some songs on love and whatnot because I was a member of a choir. And, and so I, this, what we're doing right today is just another of, of those steps along that path of trying to uh, fulfill. Uh, and that's the reason I would uh, like, to, to like to think that I'm still here. I, and I believe absolutely. I believe that um, for everything, there is a purpose, and we just need to be able to explore that purpose. And certainly, you felt that you were very guided, and you, you speak about writing your book, and you said you felt that you were being guided from above, that you were being given direction for writing this book. Is, do you feel spirit, or do you feel guided in a day-to-day in a -day life? I, yes, I do. I'm, I, I read, I, I, and I have for a long time, I read tarot cards and whatnot. So there's a certain amount of that psychic background, even in my family, because my family history is, is, is gypsy. Um, but, um, and mediumship and so on, spirit. I, I sat down and wrote this book. I can't say I really wrote it, but I guess I did. Um, inside of two days, and my my wife is a professional author. She's got five books or so, and she read. I asked her to, and she was kind of said, "You wrote this kind of because it wasn't really the kind of thing that I was noted for doing." And uh, so, yeah, it, it it 
it, these kind of experiences, uh, I, and I believe the same as you and I are meeting now and, and talking, they're meant to be, and they're meant to be at the right time. You contacted me over a year ago. I did. It, it was not obviously the right time. Um, you tried two or three times to make this happen recently, and it was not the right time. And I keep saying to, to, to the universe, to others, if it's not meant to be, then, you know, stand in the way, do something to stop it for me, and, and so on. If it is, and, and it's um, going to be meaningful for other people, the service, and so on, then open the doors and, and let's walk through them. And so yes, I do. I do uh, um, depend more and more um, on the universe and uh, the spiritual energy that we all have. That we talk about the soul and love and whatnot. That's not a mystical thing. It's an, there's an intelligence behind it. There's an, that, that same intelligence is what telling us that it's about love and compassion and, and so on and how we grow as individuals. And we don't die. We pass on into a, into a transition to another uh, form of energy, but we do not die. And that changed my whole feeling about death and life uh, and as well. I'm quite comfortable. So, so how did it change your perception of death, having this experience? Well, knowing now that, uh, you know, how, how I feel about death and experience is... is is if I go on to the the uh, the pass on, um, I know that not only do I continue to live, that I go through a transition, that um, there is more purpose for me to grow as an individual. Reincarnation is 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 what uh, uh, something that's in the back of my mind. I don't know where I go on that kind of thing as well. But um, I do believe that we do not die. We, we change into a different energy and, and, uh, and, and that there are other energies like family and, and people that we have, like we call soulmates and so on and so forth, that we can um, uh, communicate with and so on and so forth. So that kind of, I haven't really sorted it all out. There's all kinds of information about it and the internet and all that kind of thing. But I, I try my best to keep things simple because there's only one um, message for me to deliver. And that is basically that it's all about love and compassion. That love and compassion is ongoing. It is the soul. We do not die. We move on to a transition to another form of energy but there's still the intelligence there. Uh, I'm a bit of a medium as well, so uh, 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 that opens another hole. So yeah. did this new belief this, from this experience that you had, was it um, in conflict at all with any of your previous Christian um, teachings? You said you were a Christian minister. <laughs> did you have any feelings of conflict around that? Or did you meet with conflict with anyone re regarding that from, from that particular standpoint? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, um, being in, the, in a Christian area, then of course, there's the evangelical <clears throat> and there's the, what you might call the orthodox or whatever. But um, even when I was in, in the pulpit, so to speak, uh, for five or six years, uh, my preaching even then, long before this happened, was all about love. It was uh, I don't know why, but it was. It was always centered around and any message that Jesus had or any messages that I did on a weekly basis were all centered on love. Um, and so, uh, but when I became a Reiki master, uh, as I went through the martial arts and started to follow energy and so on, and, and heard about and decided to study the Reiki um, being hands-on healing for those that don't know what reiki is um it's all about love energy as well and so uh, and that i went through again before this whole situation so things were kind of when i look back on my life i see a, a whole pattern of preparation and and learning and uh, and education if you will uh, to um, be in a position that 
you can recognize what is real and what isn't. Because when you go down this path, as I'm sure you're aware, Lorraine, that uh, there are some pretty extreme um, thinking and opinions that are out there. And uh, I try to keep centered my feet on the ground where people can basically say, you know, I can accept that. I can, I can agree with that. But Christianity wise, yes, I had some people that were, you know, but you learn very quickly to turn around and say, well, you believe what you want, even within the Christian uh, uh, umbrella itself. I mean, there's so many organizations that, uh, that don't agree with each other, never mind someone else. That's a very I, good point. You know, yes. And so that kind of conflict is actually one of the reasons I pulled away from the church and, and got away from religion. I'm more spiritual now than I am religious. Um, because I feel that there's, well, I, I know after what I've experienced, that that's where the truth, it really lies. You're staying away from the dogma and the rules and the, and the human frailty. So I give you a long answers when you ask questions. I'm sorry. And that's, <laughs> that is wonderful. I, I love that you're able to expand and share your, your inner lookings at that. It's, it's very important to be able to, to talk um, openly when being asked about a question, especially such really big questions, because anyone that may be listening to this may be having um, the same warrior concern that it may conflict with some of their their earlier teachings that they've had. So, uh, so thank you for for sharing that. How do you feel? You're talking about. Um, following the energy, expanding energy and love and compassion. And you also talked about your intuition and mediumship. Did this experience open you up more intuitively? And, and if so, why do you feel that is? Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, and the, uh, the energy, uh, like when, when we actually experience um, energies from the other side, if you will, uh, from the spiritual world kind of thing, the shift, our ability to shift and, and uh, kind of plug in our energy to same levels with those on the other side uh, requires uh, a, a wisdom, a, a, an understanding um, uh, actually studying how it's done and so on and so forth. And then uh, once you realize that, you're actually teaching yourself to go into that uh, intuitive energy area, if you will, and then be able to actually do it at will and, uh, and do it more and more efficiently. It's a kind of technique of learning how to become a uh, spiritual enough or, so that if you're studying to be a medium or something like this there's so much information out there now that can help people to actually make understand how it works why it works and even uh, there's so much overlay now with quantum physics and so how deep that they're going right down to the molecular level of intelligence and, and knowing that there's even one simple molecule that there is uh, um, uh, information, intelligence, and uh, uh, that is there that um, is actually beyond our ability to actually understand, but it's there and it becomes more and more less of, of a woo-woo kind of spooky thing and more of a practical hands-on and that's the kind of personality that I am. Uh, I want to, you know, say, keep it real, keep things centered. And, and so that you can turn around and actually say, yeah, that makes sense. It's not just something that that's, has been in the past. These things would happen to people because there's no real um, uh, science or physics behind it before. Now there is getting to be more and more. And uh, it's, it's amazing that, that these things are being found out and helping to realize what was considered almost um, evil is now real. It's, it's what it is. And by that, I'm talking about the energy. And I re keep referring to a love energy, but it's all, it's all the same. And, and uh, it's, it's the intelligence that we have 
right down to our molecular level. It's what the intelligence we have when we, we pass on, when this body's gone uh, and, and we, we move on into a transition. We don't die. We, that intelligence and that information stays. Physics is proving it now. And so that makes it even more exciting. It does make it exciting, doesn't it? And so really what I'm hearing you say is that it's taking spiritual concepts, concepts, concepts that the mystics and the ancients have really used for ages, um, and fusing it with current scientific knowledge to be able to bring an understanding together. Is, is, is that right, Fred? Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's being more and more authenticated, more and more easy uh, to understand. The more we understand how the internet works, for example, how that energy and information is, is, is people say, well, how, do, how does it work when you're talking to someone from the other side? Well, well-known mediums like John Edwards and so on and so forth use a comparison like the internet. How does it work when you've got this information that's all out in, in the, you can't see it, you can't put your hands on it, but if you've got a receiver, you've got all this access to the information, which we're using right now today as we talk to each other. That information is out there, but you can't see it. And it's the same thing with, with our spiritual energy. And so learning to, to teach our own, our own mind, the left side of our brain versus the right side of the brain to, to, uh, um, uh, exercise itself to the point where it becomes more and more aware. Our instinctive and intuitiveness has been put down in the industrial times. It was not important. And now people begin to realize that, hey, this actually is, is the, the way to uh, understand love and compassion and 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 hate and all that kind of and and being able to deal with it and grow in those areas instead of putting it down as being unimportant and materialism is more important, and that's encouraging. The, the more we see this, and then the more it has to happen because of the technology and so on. They're now got pilot. I don't know if you realize, Lorraine, but they've got pilot programs now that they're putting internet in in glasses and they're even putting internet in contact lenses so that people can actually with their mind like a robot activate and these are pilot things are out they're not just poo -poo. They're, uh, apparently the physicists uh, i was watching a program by physicists and they were showing these these things that they're already developing so this is uh, 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 my lifetime i'm not going to see some of the uh, amazing things that we're going to uh, it would you know, if I came back in 50 years, it would be like a whole different world. You're going to see a lot more than me, obviously, because uh, our ages, well, one never knows, does one? <laughs> <laughs> but what I hear you saying is you're t when you're talking about technologies we're, and the expansion of it, we're talking about really the transmission of energy. Yeah. and being able to transmit that at will. And so when I relate that to our intuition and our soul, we're talking about understanding that everything is just energy. And so that's really a form of almost telekinesis, isn't it? When they're transmitting energy and information so quickly. Absolutely, it is, it is. Uh, they do what we call uh, uh, remote viewing and whatnot and has been around. Actually, it was in the, in the Second World War, they were using remote viewing for, uh, to understand where there were uh, places, plants and whatnot to attack and things like that. Um, and there's books written on it and, and the, the United States government spent millions of dollars. Um, so they wouldn't have been doing that if there was not some justification for even way back then. Uh, but uh, where technology has taken us, each, and every almost every year they're, they're making uh, big changes and so on. They're saying that you buy a laptop a year later, it's out of date kind of thing. And uh, so technology is, is, is huge. Uh, it's beyond still our understanding, but it is, uh, all based on energy and 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 the hardware like these laptops and so on are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller till it gets to the point where we will be reusing our minds more than we will uh, our ink 
more in conjunction with technology. And uh, that's where physics is already moving. And so I'll have to come back in another life to see all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so Fred, I really, um, I enjoy listening to you talk about your your fusion of spirituality and technology and that is completely how i feel about things that how in our current understanding of physics and energy that we're able to really quantify things that that the mystics were telling us um centuries ago and so now we're able it's no longer woo it is now fact science fact Talking about our intuition and our soul, tell me if someone was listening right now, tell me if they were wondering about how to find their life purpose or if they were wondering what it is that they're here for, how would you guide them to, to find that answer? Well, the, uh, the only doorway that I know of at this point um, that really uh, surfaces is ability to meditate and a, a lot of times uh, there's a lot of unfortunately I don't know I shouldn't say maybe unfortunately but um, there's a lot of approaches to that word meditate and, and what it means and so on when I refer to meditate I refer to what I learned through martial arts in the Asian approach where you quiet your mind, you don't visualize anything at all. In fact, you try to stop yourself from visualizing anything. And when you learn to quiet your mind, your, your uh, soul becomes more uh, revealed, if you will, Be, uh, it becomes more enhanced. The truth is within us. That's why I wrote my, my book, I call it the truth within. When I had a workshop, I call it truth within. The truth is within each and every one of us. That love and compassion and energy that I talk about, the soul itself, is within each one of us. If you want to plug into it, you've got to stop all the noise. You've got to stop the monkey mind, the monkey heart, and all this other different clauses and so on. That you can't go in. When, when you do what most people refer to now as meditation, it is a relaxation process. It's not really a way to get inside and find your purpose, who you are, and so on and so forth. It's, it's a relaxation progress. And that's, 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 that's good. It's, a, it's an exercise and it's healthy. But if you want to really find um, truth and feel love, feel compassion, so on, to go inside, you have to learn to meditate. And, and quiet the mind as much as possible. And then the more you do that, the more the truth reveals itself. You don't have to do anything. There's no special formula or anything else. There's just the hardest part for us as human beings is to sit still, still our mind and quieten it down. So then the truth is there, it's there. And the more you do that, the more it grows. And uh, you can't have, uh, of, uh, uh, you can't have fear and love in the same space. You just can't have it. Ego is based on fear. That's, and most of that is how we live our life as our ego. Um, uh, on our left side of our brain, our consciousness, it's about me, 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 me. I, 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 concern, worry, and all the rest of it. That's all fear-based. And in order for that to lessen itself, we have to train ourselves to grow our love. The way we grow our love is recognize it it's there and meditation is what does that i love that that's wonderful and i feel your energy i feel your love and compassion coming from off of you so tell me again fred um just for those that are listening the name once more of your book and where someone might be able to find it if they wanted to read more about it well, it's, it's an old one now. I wrote it in 2007. It's on Amazon it's still, and it's called uh, Returning to the Garden. And uh, the Truth Within is a subtitle on it. But uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I had about a thousand printed and I give them away. I, I'm, it, to me, it's not even, I don't even want this to seem like it's a marketing thing uh, to ploy. So I, 
I don't care about that part of it. Um, what you're doing right now would 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 be of more value even than I, I appreciate that, Fred. And really what you're saying is that it's important for you to get the word out. That's that's really what I'm hearing you saying is that you want to be able to get the word out and to be able to allow others to be able to have a similar experience in that this love and compassion to be able to expand their soul and get to know their soul nature more. So that's what I'm taking away from this. Yep, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So the reason that I'm still doing it, I'm 76 in another couple of months, and, and uh, I don't know how much longer I've got. I'm healthy. I, I, I plan on being around for another 20 years or so, but who knows? So these kind of situations and opportunities are, are just what I, like I said, I feel I'm still here to do. It's, all, it's more of an obligation than anything else. Not that it feels like an obligation, but it's something I, I feel a, a purpose that is, is uh, I don't know, it uh, almost feels like a responsibility at this point. I understand that you came back, you feel that this is a, this is the reason why you came back. You feel that very driven to be able to share that story. And, and, um, and I appreciate hearing it. it. It really is a very beautiful story. And I can tell from the way that you've spoken that you have a lot of, of your own soul's intuition involved and your, your soul nature just emanates from you. that love and compassion does emanate from you. And I do feel that this is part of your service. This is part of the reason why you're here. And when I look at your life, I see how you've always been involved in service and involved in giving to, to others in some respect. And so I thank you for being of service to us and sharing your story. It really is remarkable to be, to come back after 18 minutes of being clinically dead and being able to, to be able to walk and talk and, and tell that story. So that is indeed a miracle. And I thank you for, um, for sharing this story with us. I, I thank you for the opportunity, Lorraine, to do, to do so. And, and uh, if, if uh, it helps even one person then it's worth the effort. I agree, Fred. A absolutely. If, if one person hears this and, and changes something for them, then th that is the purpose to it. So I, I thank you for, for sharing your love and compassion with me today and with whoever may be watching. Um, it really is a, a pleasure to get to meet you and, and to talk to you about this. So I thank you once more, Fred, and I wish you very many blessings. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Lorraine. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Fred. And we're just going to finish this up. I think that um, the editing, oops, I dropped something now. I think they're going to, when they edit it, they'll make a, a little bit of a footnote there. But truly, Fred, this was a pleasure to meet you. You do have a lovely energy. And, um, and I feel that you are very blessed. It's, um, it, it, it's just, it, it comes off of you. And, um, and you're right, it is a matter of fusing that, that spiritual concept with, with technology, with understanding the quantum field. And I feel that we're in an, a new era for that reason, being able to, to share that information. So thank you very much for uh, allowing me to connect with you. And I do appreciate that. Once this is done, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. I'm, I'm hoping that with the editing, it's going to, um, that we'll have an intro and a, uh, and an outro and I'll, I'll send it to you so that you can watch it when it's all completed. Cool. Cool. All righty. Yeah. And thanks again, Fred. I appreciate it. You're right. Everything happens in divine timing, right? That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it is a pleasure. I, are you still in Ontario? Yeah. 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 Uh, what about? Um, well, we're uh, close to these are small towns, Fenland Falls, uh, um, or Lindsay. Uh, oh, okay, uh, we're about about uh, uh, um, an hour's drive from Toronto, uh, northeast kind of thing in a small couple of 
Um, we're actually got 50 acres. We're in the uh, oh, wow. farm, farm area. Actually, we're in Amish area. We like to see the horses and buggies going down the street. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's 50 acres and my wife's got a animals. She loves her horses and goats and stuff like that. And I that have, sounds like heaven. <laughs> it, it is kind of uh, 30 of those acres now is uh, archery because I, I also love to do traditional archery. So I have uh, a bunch of targets in the bush and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I do now is my my hobby when, once I sold my martial arts center and whatnot. So it keeps me busy. I really enjoyed having the opportunity to speak with Fred about his near-death experience. I felt his energy came right through. I hope that you enjoyed watching it just as much as I enjoyed this opportunity to have a discussion about near-death experiences. I believe that understanding the nature of our soul where we come from and where we go to after we pass from this physical realm is very important. Having this understanding can give us a better experience here in the physical plane and be more in the here and now. If you've had any experiences that you would like to be able to share or any comments after watching this video, do place it in the section below. I thank you very much for watching and I wish you all very many blessings and may you walk with spirit.